Hi, I'm attorney James Betzold, and if you're a new lawyer, recently out of law school, or maybe you just passed the bar, where you are now, I once was. I was starting my own law firm right out of law school, and I've got some tips that can help you move things along. I hope you find it helpful. So you're starting your law firm, but where? So you're gonna need some office space. Now there's all sorts of lawyers, there's all sorts of practice areas, there's all sorts of scenarios that might play out, but let's go with some typical scenarios for maybe a small town or a mid-sized town or a family attorney or an immigration lawyer, uh, because that's what I am, um, or a criminal defense attorney, right? You're gonna need a physical place to practice law. Now, let's start off with some of the very typical responses you might hear from some broke person in law school. Um, I'm just gonna work in Starbucks and meet my people in a public place until I can find a place. First of all, if you're going to Starbucks and you're gonna meet with clients there, let me just tell you, that's probably a mistake. Uh, you're not gonna have any privacy. It doesn't look very professional. They're gonna want a place to sit down and meet with you professionally. So let's just take Starbucks or a coffee shop and psh, mark that off our list. Secondly, you may be the attorney who says, well, I'll just do house calls. That's creepy, don't do that. Uh, you want to be on your territory when you're meeting with your clients. You want them to know that you're the expert and that in your office they can feel safe and secure and you're not being recorded. Uh, all the silly things that you've heard in probably some horror stories, right? Now, uh, as an attorney, you may make a house call from time to time. If somebody you know dies, a client of yours dies, is a family member that dies and you want to be there for them while the news media surrounds the house. Okay, that's okay, that's not creepy. But if you're just saying, no, I'll just come to your house every single time, you don't wanna do that. It's not professional. So let's assume you're not gonna be doing exclusively house calls. There's commercial office buildings, right? You can go to uh, an office building and rent uh, a suite there. Uh, that's good, not a bad thing to do at all. In fact, uh, it may be one of the more recommended things to do. But here's some things you wanna consider. Are you in a situation where you're going to want signage that people going down the road can see? Are you in a situation where you're gonna have enough parking? Are people gonna be able to find your office easily? That's a major consideration, right? So um, typically when you sign up for uh, a lease in an office building, you're gonna know these things. You're gonna see if there's parking. You're gonna know whether you get signage out front or not. Um, and you'll know whether it's gonna be easily for your clients to access. So commercial office building, good solution. Let's talk briefly about one of these other things, these shared or co-working spaces. Um, sometimes due to cost and sometimes just because it's hip and people are hipsters now and they think it's cool and they talk about being more community driven. Um, they're talking about these shared office spaces where it might be like an open work environment and maybe you can bring people to come in and consult with. They might have a conference room you can reserve. Uh, your own office itself is probably gonna be relatively small. So you definitely wanna consider that. Um, and you may not have room for, for example, a file room or a copier room or these other rooms that you might typically want in your own office. Uh, you might find out that uh, for your market, for good visibility of a sign out front that you want, uh, you know, they've got these mini malls, these little strip malls. Uh, you can have a number of different types of tenants. A lot of them now around here have like a vape shop, maybe a smoke shop, maybe an insurance agent, maybe an attorney, uh, maybe a tax preparation place, something like that. One of these strip mall situations where you get your own signage out front. You're typically on a nice busy road, so people will see it as you go, as they go by. Um, typically, there's enough parking, easy access in and out. Uh, so that can be a really good solution as well. We always talk about being innovative, doing as much as we can with as little as possible. Thinking about the future, some attorneys have converted a house into office space. So they'll buy a house in some part of town where maybe it's not too expensive. Uh, make sure you check all the zoning rules and requirements before you do this, uh, because if you put a commercial office or in office uh, in a residential area that may be prohibited uh, by the zoning laws, and you don't you don't want to get in a situation where you're trying to hide 
the fact that there's 10 people parked in front of your house because you're an attorney and you're taking appointments there. But there's many situations where it does work. So know the zoning laws, go ask somebody at the township or at the city planning department, uh, make sure that if you open a, uh, an office there that it'll be okay. And that sometimes is a good way to get near downtown without being actually in downtown. Um, make sure you have permission to hang your shingle or sign out front. And again, make sure you've got that parking situation figured out because people don't want to be inconvenienced when they go and see you. They want it to be a good experience. All right, another option, buy your own building, buy your own office building. If you can swing the financing, which you may be able to do through the Small Business Association. There's local offices and representatives around. They work with banks to help secure small business loans. Well, you as a lawyer, you're starting a small business. You may be able to qualify for many thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in loans at a very low rate in order to do that. Now, if you buy your own office space, be smart about it. Buy something that's good quality, that's in an area that will traditionally not lose its value. Buy it in a part of town that's good. You know, you got good traffic, low crime, uh, the sidewalks are kept nice, the city take cares of it. Take cares that takes takes care of it. Here are some overall tips when considering where to launch your office, where to put your office. Visibility. You want high foot traffic or car traffic. You want people to be able to see and read your sign as they're driving or walking by. If you think about the cost of a billboard, that can be upwards of two, three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month. If you have good visibility of a sign on the side of the road near a highway or a busy highway, you've essentially got a free billboard if you can put up a large enough sign. You'll want to check the signage requirements of your township, city, or county, township, municipality, right? Uh, they probably are going to have some regulations dealing with how big your sign can be, what type it has to be, where it can be mounted, etc. Uh, you probably will need a permit for it, but essentially you're buying a permanent billboard, which is great because a lot of people over the years are going to get to know your name and who you are and the type of law you practice. Um, you want to make sure you have enough space. Sufficient space is key. You want your clients to be comfortable when they walk in. You don't want them to be cramped in a tiny lobby. Uh, you want them to feel comfortable enough to open up, uh, especially if you're doing something like divorce or, or um, I guess, even physical injury, immigration, any, any type of law where your client really needs to be open and honest with you. You want them to have the physical space to do that. They need to be comfortable in your space. So make sure you don't skimp on actual square footage. Um, you want to make sure your clients have easy access to the building. Okay, so parking. Uh, make sure it's handicap accessible if at all possible. At least have some option for that. Um, and it's really nice if you have some sort of local landmarks that you can refer to when giving directions to your office. Um, believe it or not, not everybody has Google Maps yet. Uh, and some people will get confused. So if you can say, hey, we're the big blue building next to Starbucks, people are going to be able to find that uh, when they get close. And that's helpful. So just all these factors play into easy access. And of course, cost. Uh, cost is a huge consideration. You don't want your monthly rent or mortgage cost to drown you. Um, and when you're first starting out, you can always uh, start out a little smaller and then move your way up uh, based on your finances and what's available to you. That may be a good option. Although I'll tell you what, real estate prices only go up and right now, especially in 2021, when everybody's working from home, there's not too much of a demand for it. Um, so you may be able to get one at a really good value. So go talk to the SBA, uh, go talk to your lender, see if there's anything you can do to, to get that office building <laughs> and make it into your own. Um, lastly, noise. Uh, you wanna be sure there's not like a ton of extra noise. And I got a funny story about this. The first building that we had our law firm in, right out of law school, uh, it was actually a house and office. So in the back, there's living quarters, kitchen, bathroom, shower, bedrooms, stuff like that. And in the front, uh, we had a few offices and there was a lobby and a reception area. And so it was really, it was set up ideally for us actually. 
Um, one thing that we noticed is that right across the street, oh, about 80 yards from us, no, less, probably 50 yards, uh, train tracks. And that train would go by sometimes during the day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and it gets loud. And uh, it got loud, and there, I remember being on the phone with the court one time, and the train goes by, and they go, oh my goodness, what was that? I said, well, it's just the train, it goes by. But we dealt with it, we lived through it, we grew our business and moved on up in the world. So um, you can always start small, but make sure whenever possible, you're in a quieter neighborhood. Uh, that just helps for all sorts of reasons. All right, thanks for joining us today. A um, lot of information on the office space, a lot of things to think about. And like I said, it's not something where I can say, oh, do exactly this, this, and this. No, really, when you're trying to be, um, when you're trying to open your, your own law firm, right out of law school, you may have some limited options, so you gotta make compromises here or there. But these are some important things to look out for, and it worked well for us. Have a great day.